Scientists are usually idealists and understandably focus on the best things that their discoveries could potentially offer, which means they occasionally overlook mankind's capacity for finding undesired, even nefarious, uses for their creations. At Kitty Hawk in 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright made four short flights in the world's first powered aircraft. Since then, airplanes have made the world a much smaller place, making it possible for anyone with enough cash and the willingness to sit in a tiny chair for hours to travel halfway around the world in less than a day. But airplanes have a downside too, a huge downside, and the Wright brothers came to regret aspects of their epic invention. According to the Baltimore Sun, the Wright brothers thought the airplane might allow all nations to gain a tactical advantage in war, which would make everyone essentially equal in war, therefore impossible. Orville Wright said in 1915, The aeroplane will prevent war by making it too expensive, too slow, too difficult, too long drawn out. Then, he went and lived through two world wars. By 1948, Orville Wright had completely changed his outlook, saying, We dared to hope we had invented something that would bring lasting peace to the earth, but we were wrong. We underestimated man's capacity to hate and to corrupt good means for an evil end. Imagine being called the father of the Segway, or the father of Smelloscope. That would suck, right? Eureka! Did you build the Smelloscope? No! I remembered that I built one last year! Now imagine being called the father of Lethal Injection. At least those first two titles won't cause party conversation to awkwardly cease while everyone within earshot makes excuses about getting another drink. But for Dr. J. Chapman, that's the name he's stuck with. He told The Guardian in 2010, The media sometimes refers to me as the father of the lethal injection. It was not one of my purposes in life. It was something I was asked to do, and I did it on the spur of the moment. Chapman says he developed the lethal cocktail because he thought it would make the death penalty process more efficient. He hoped that making execution more humane would lead to swifter executions. But today, he regrets his part in developing the lethal injection system, not because he's come to realize that capital punishment is barbaric or anything like that, though. Nope. Chapman regrets developing lethal injection because it didn't really change anything. People still linger on death row for decades. And he says that he actually has the opposite problem with the method. He thinks it's too humane. He put it bluntly, I'm an eye for an eye person. The lethal injection is too easy for some of them. Some inventors regret their inventions because they cause death and destruction or have the potential to destroy the world. On the other hand, some inventors regret their inventions because they turned out to be super annoying. Yes, we're talking about the digital camera. According to the BBC, Michael Thompson, who captured the world's first color digital photograph in 1972, doesn't regret the entire concept of the digital camera. Digital cameras have done great things for photographers, not the least of which is making photography a lot less expensive and therefore more accessible to the average person. But is it really such an awesome thing that everyone and their duck-lipped teenager has access to a camera with a screen reversal feature? Let's, uh, let's all just all take a selfie. Let's take a selfie. Let's take a selfie. Oh, let's, let's do it. Do it. Okay. Okay. Everyone get in. Take it. Chin down. Okay. 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 Pucker face. Mm -hmm. okay. That's exactly the kind of thing Tom said hates seeing. He told the BBC, I feel frustrated by all these people who have cameras taking pictures of everything in sight and selfies. You're walking along and a selfie stick suddenly appears. I sometimes think whoever invented this technology should be dealt with. In the late 1920s, American engineer Philo Farnsworth became the first person to successfully transmit a television image. According to biography, Farnsworth patented his ideas and in 1938 founded the Farnsworth Television and Radio Corporation. Farnsworth had big dreams for television. He thought it had nearly unlimited potential as an educational tool and could solve illiteracy and ignorance. I'm fed up with all this reading. You're a wormwood, you start acting like one. Sit up and look at the TV. He even believed it could stop war. Well, that's what he thought at first. Farnsworth's son, Kent, later said that his father hated what his invention had become to the point where he refused to let his kids watch television. The younger Farnsworth quoted him as saying, There's nothing on it worthwhile, and we're not going to watch it in this household, and I don't want it in your intellectual diet. It is worth noting that Farnsworth later had a slight change of heart when he watched the broadcast of the moon landing. Medicine has a long and not always squeaky clean history, and MDMA in particular has been down a long, weird road. If you don't know what that is, you probably have heard it referenced by its more popular name, ecstasy, the recreational drug that was popularized in the 1990s. 
Alexander Shulgin didn't invent ecstasy, but he thought it had psychiatric uses. According to the South China Morning Post, he was first introduced to the drug in 1976 and started developing a way to synthesize it while also developing methods for using it for psychotherapy. Obviously, his plans for MDMA didn't exactly pan out. The drug was banned in 1985 and placed on the list of Schedule One drugs with, quote, no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. Shulgin later regretted that his rediscovery of MDMA had played a part in its rising popularity as a recreational drug. Today, the name Nobel is synonymous with peace. It is, after all, attached to the prestigious Peace Prize. So Nobel himself must have been a real peace-loving guy, right? Well, maybe, but Alfred Nobel was also a lot like Michael Bay. He liked making things go boom. Awesome barbecue! Awesome pull! According to Nobel's own website, Alfred Nobel not only invented dynamite but was also involved in the design and development of cannons and rockets. Later in life, he started imagining that he might be able to end war by developing a weapon so terrible no one would dare use it, once saying, On the day that two army corps can mutually annihilate each other in a second, all civilized nations will surely recoil with horror and disband their troops. Nobel clearly didn't brush up on his Wright brothers' history, and he appears to have regretted his involvement in weapons making later in life. At least that's what Albert Einstein noted in a 1945 speech when he said, Alfred Nobel invented an explosive more powerful than any then known, an exceedingly effective means of destruction. To atone for this accomplishment and to relieve his conscience, he instituted his award for the promotion of peace. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.